What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. So guys, in the previous tutorial, we had set up the Jupyter Notebook on an EC2 instance and that Jupyter Notebook was accessible using the instance public IP over port 8888 over HTTP. And at the end of the previous video, we had discussed that it's basically insecure. So as a result in this tutorial, we will generate the self-signed certificate to secure the connection by setting up HTTPS. So here we will be using OpenSSL to generate self-signed SSL certificates. So let's get started. So I have already SSH or logged in into this instance that we have configured uh, in the previous tutorial. So I will simply do ls. So here we are going to create a new directory for storing the certificates. So I'm going to say mkdircerts and I will say enter. You can create the directory with any name you want. Right, so in my case, I have created the directory with the name as certs. Now I will navigate to that directory, I will say cd certs. So here, uh, basically, we are going to execute the command that is basically open SSL uh, command to generate the certificates. So I have that command ready. So I'm going to copy and paste that command over here. So if you want to learn more about this command and each individual parameter, if you want to know, then I had covered this as a part of one of the previous tutorials. So I will post the link of that video in the video description. So if you want to refer that, you can navigate to that video, right? So this is the command. Uh, so I'm going to say enter. Now it will ask for some information like country name, email address, uh, domain name, right? So all that information you have to enter. So I will say India over here. It's asking for state, I will say Goa, locality, I will simply say Goa again, organization name, so I can say SRCE, CDE, enter organization unit, I will say IT basically, here it's asking for the common name, so here I will copy and paste the public IPv4 address, paste, enter. Now it's asking for the email address. So I will enter the email address probably .com and I will say enter and now we are done. Now if I do ls then we will have the two files that is cert.pem and .key file, right? So now what we need to do is we are simply going to re-execute the Jupyter lab or the Jupyter notebook command. So I will simply say Jupyter hyphen lab Jupyter hyphen lab hyphen hyphen IP 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 hyphen hyphen no browser space I will say allow root access allow hyphen root followed by the cert file hyphen hyphen cert file equal to the path of the mycert.pem. So in my case, it's going to be the home slash ubuntu slash certs slash mycert.pem. It's good idea to give the absolute path, right? Followed by the key file space. Now again, it's going to be the same path except the file name. So it's going to be the my key dot key. And we will say enter. Oh, it says Jupyter land not found. It should be Jupyter lab. Okay, Jupyter lab say enter. Now it's up and running. So here you can see we are not using uh, no hub. So that's the reason you are able to see the logs. So now uh, we are going to test this. So what we will do is we are going to copy the IPv4 public address, open a new tab, paste it over here, colon, double eight, double eight. So right now it's trying to reach out to the server using HTTP. So if you look at the logs and it says SSL error, HTTP request is incoming. So that's the reason. It through an exception or it didn't serve, right? It says the site can't be reached. So now here we will add the HTTPS, right? So I will say HTTPS colon double slash and I will say enter. 
now here uh, chrome will throw an exception saying your connection is not private and it will not give us any option to proceed with this because we are using the self-signed certificate now to bypass this what you need to do is click anywhere on the screen and type this is unsafe and as you can see the page is being reloaded and this will be bypassed right so here we will enter the password and we will say login so now as you can see uh, it's HTTPS enabled using the self-signed certificate so here you need to uh, make sure that uh, whichever domain you're trying to access is trusted and then only you should uh, bypass that self-signed certificate or the not private uh, exception that Chrome has uh, thrown, right? So guys, uh, this is how you can uh, serve your Jupyter Notebook or start your Jupyter uh, Notebooks over HTTPS, right? Now, apart from this, let me close this, clear this out. Now here, if, if you look, then we are passing all the parameters manually from here. So instead of that, what you can do is you can navigate to CD tile slash dot Jupyter directory and see LS. So instead of that, what you can do is you can modify this Jupyter notebook config dot py file and add all those parameters within this file. So if you do that, then you only need to run the Jupyter lab command and all the parameters would be picked up from this file. Right, so let's try to do that. I will say vim jupyter notebook.config.py. Say enter. I will go at very end. And here I will say insert. So here I have the configuration ready. So I'm going to copy and paste it over here. So here we have all the configuration. So here we have PyLab set up as inline, then we have cert file, key file, IP address, open browser is equal to false, on which port we want to run this, that is double eight double eight. If we want to allow root access, true or false, right? So now I can save this file and rerun the Jupyter lab command. So I will simply say Jupyter hyphen lab and I will say enter and it should be able to pick up all those configuration from that file. So let me reload this. So now as you can see, it's up and running, right? So this is how you can configure the parameters within the config file itself as per your requirement. If you don't want to pass it as a part of the command, so guys, uh, that's all for this tutorial. That's all I wanted to cover. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.